Hello and welcome. You're watching FII. I'm Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor, a show in which we talk about issues that matter to you. And if there are basically two conversations, if I could highlight, that is happening in every household right now, it is one, which vaccine to get? And second, should we take out our money from the stock market or push in more? So both these issues, don't worry, we've got FII's team covering both of them for you over the course of today's program and tomorrow's as well. But first up today, we will talk about the stock market. Now, the domestic equity market continued to bleed for the fourth consecutive session today among the broad-based sort of sell-off. All sectoral indices ended in the day with the red, with Nifty, Realty, Metal, PSU, banks, all of them dropping up to about 3%. It's not much. But why has that got everybody so nervous? Let's look at, as always, at some facts over here. For this, I'm turning up to my uber cool screen over here. Now, nifty Sensex decline has happened for the fourth straight day. The Sensex uh, uh, today went up, which opened at about uh, 50436, closed at this number. Now, it might not look much, but look at that. Down by over 500 points. Now, why is this so important? Because remember, India has never been this invested in the stock market. Now, why do I say that? That's because we've never had so many sort of retail investors putting in their hard-earned money. Remember the pandemic? Remember the show we did on FII about DMAT accounts? Never in the history have we seen such a massive jump of people directly investing in their money in the stock market. So the slightest dip as well has huge ramifications. It can lead to a panic. It can lead to a massive sort of situation where we don't know what to do. So today on the program, we're looking at those numbers and we've got an expert panel as well. But first up, I showed you what today, the fourth straight day where we saw a downturn in these points. Look at this. Again, Nifty opened at about 14946, closed at about uh, 14729, nearly 190 points. Again, not much, but why is it that this is creating a panic? Top gainers, for example, first up, let's look at that. ITC, 1.2% over there. Infosys also up, HTFC up, TCS as well. One of the top gainers in the market today. Top losers, and the list is quite huge if you see we've only caught up uh, some of the most important ones for you reliance for example 2.16 percent over there in the sin bank 2.54 spi 2.75 ongc 4.95 percent over there ntpc down as well so is sun pharma so what exactly is this telling us at this point and also if you are somebody who's been watching out for the stock market this one term might really be bothering you and that one term is this Fed meeting that is happening in the United States. What is going to be the fallout of that and what implications it is going to have. A lot of people wrote into us saying they don't understand exactly what this is and how it is going to impact. So here's an FII explainer for you telling you what exactly is this meeting all about and how will it impact the market. The U.S. Federal Reserve System, or just the Fed as it is usually known, is the central bank of the United States, just like the Reserve Bank of India. The Federal Open Market Committee meets at regular intervals, just as the Reserve Bank of India does, to decide on the monetary policy framework. Now, to make this easier for you to understand, monetary policies decide on interest rates as well as liquidity, that is money supply for an economy. This impacts inflation and growth. So why is it that this Fed meeting is so crucial and why is the spotlight on it this time both in our domestic markets and globally? Rising 10-year US yields have left equity markets at a crossroads, with some experts feeling any increase in US interest rates could trigger an outflow of funds from equities in global markets and encourage foreign institutional investors to move back to the safety of the US Treasury. All right, so that's a basic input into what exactly this means. But even the world markets, if you look at them, Asian and European indices also dropped today. Investors waited to see what exactly the U.S. Federal Reserve will signal and a faster path uh, towards policy normalization as well than previously expected. The U.S. Central Bank ends, uh, also ended on a two-day meeting later in the day. So we'll have that sort of development coming up overnight and tomorrow again. That makes it a very important day at the market. So what should you do? 
how should you invest and what are the key factors that you should keep in mind. We've got an excellent panel for you today. Let me begin by talking about uh, Amrish Baliga, he's a stock market expert and investor. We've got uh, Mr. Anant Narayan, he's a senior India analyst, observatory group as well and he's an associate professor, uh, finance and senior India analyst. Lots of names around there. Fiki National Committee and Capital Markets member as well. Mr. Binod Modi, Head Strategy for Reliance Securities, joins us today on the program. Also, Sunil Guy, Chairman Fiki Capital Markets Committee and founder and CEO of Nova Dhruva Capital, is with us. Dhirendra Kumar, founder and chief executive uh, from Value Research, is also with us on FII. We'll be joined very shortly by Nilesh Shah from. Kotak. Oh, we have him already. Good to have you, Nilesh, uh, from Kotak uh, Mahindra Asset Management Company as well on the program. All right, lots of things to talk about. Let me give the first word to Amrish. Amrish, just uh, sort of tell us this big thing. Like, you know, on FII, we just behave in, you know, cutting down the clutter and just talking about the facts here and things that are going to impact the retail investor directly. So at this point, when people are wondering what to do, is this going to stay? Is this volatility going to last? Has, is the time to invest in the markets over? We've hit that 50,000 mark and now it's not going to go anywhere. How do you answer all those questions? No, I think uh, uh, one should look at the couple of moderations that are there in the market. I think the first one is the COVID cases are increasing. Mm. So we don't know whether this is, this is a second wave and whether we will have measures mm. similar to the lockdown, uh, uh, I mean, which, we had, which we had earlier, slowing the economy again. Then you have the oil prices which are boiling close to about $70. You have the bond yields which are moving up. And we should remember that uh, markets have actually doubled from last March lows. Hmm. I mean, though the economy has bounced back, but uh, is everything hunky dory? I mean, for this euphoria to sustain? That's a big question mark because it seems that the markets have at least currently moved ahead of fundamentals. And we should remember that these markets were actually moving up because of liquidity. Liquidity again was flowing more from the retail investors as compared to FIIs, because earlier retail investors are just about 25% of the market hmm. before COVID. And currently it's close to about 60-65% of the turnover in the market is for the retail investors. That's right. And again, and, hmm. and, and, and again, this, this money comes in as long as you're making money. Hmm. I mean, last 10-11 months was actually the beginner's luck for most of the people who came in into hmm. the market in the last 10-11 uh, hmm. months for the first time. But then, uh, the last one month, the market hmm. has not gone anywhere. So. This is, I think, for the first time that they are seeing that making money in the market may not be as easy as it looked like earlier. Hmm. So the day you start losing money, this liquidity will dry up. So right. I would say, I would say that possibly the market start topping out. So maybe if you have made good money, hmm. take some money off the table. All right, uh, massive indication over there. Thanks for that. But what I'm hearing from you is that so far what was driving the markets was a story of hope that India is going to come out strong out of all of this. And now over the, some time, post the budget, post other results that are coming out of the companies, etc., we're hearing sort of anxiousness again, again, you know, amongst people. How long is this going to last? You know, how bankable are these numbers that government is talking about when it comes to the economy? But more on that in just a bit, let me bring in Sunil over here. Sunil, take me, you know, it's funny and we have such short memories that talk about the same time last year. The story that was going on then versus the story now. It's the it's two ends of the spectrum over here. Take me back in that time and tell me how you're thinking today. Before I do that, I just wanted to add one sentence to your opening comment. You said there are two topics being discussed in every household. Hmm. I wanted to add the third one, cricket. Don't forget, in India, we talk about cricket all the time. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, going back to the point which you mentioned, I hmm. think this year, if you really look at it in, in the perspective, hmm. it's like tale of two cities. We have seen the worst of times and we have seen the best of the times. Mm. Last year, around this time, sitting here on the same sofa, uh, Nilesh and I, we were talking and we were, we were thinking that it is almost like August 20th, 2008, when the Lehman came down, right? It mm. was worse than that. Mm. 26th March last year was exactly around the same similar kind of feeling. Mm. And you, nobody had imagined that we will be at this situation today. And it's actually a long run, right? So when you have a long run, you do get tired at some point of time. So what you mentioned that last four days, I think one has to take in that perspective. Hmm. That is actually has been a long journey in the market. 
and now market also has to take a breather at some point time there are a uh, few new facts which have come out i think it will settle down hmm. so one has to take a long term view hmm. uh, there are some good points there are not some good points uh, and we need to take a balanced view i would say look the economy is doing well should do well this year hmm. the corporate performance should be better Hmm. uh they should have be restructured better, okay. the costs have hmm. come down should be better this mm-hmm. quarter result should be good the interest rates have come down hmm. and the flow continues even last year you see the flow was at all times high hmm. uh the current year year to date the flows have been really very 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 robust from uh, the global market given the amount of liquidity uh, globally we have got now on not so good time as uh, you just heard uh there is a worry about inflation and therefore the interest rate hmm. uh there is a worry about you talked about fed meeting and therefore the global uh, inflation hmm. Hmm. and what happens with all of this whether there is going to be a more demand for the money hmm. uh, um, ultimately it's a supply and demand hmm. so i think that will balance out the market uh, but on the whole one has to take a long term view right so it's like running a marathon over here right like you get a little tired you slow down then you pace up again that's what you're trying to say i love that analogy of tale of two cities over here let me bring in uh, nilesh since you also mentioned him there nilesh uh you know at a time when covid surge is being seen as a huge factor as well fii's also have become such a crucial part of a conversation right we talked about how and even amrish mentioned that that most of more than 50% of investors are actually retail so do you think time for fii's sort of driving the market one way or the other is gone and this is a story that's going to stay and thus sort of bringing in this volatile nature of the market here and it just might be here to stay so markets will be volatile fpis today own almost close to 20% of our market cap so we can't wish them away retail investors have done tremendous investment in last 12 15 months that's a very good sign and i hope and pray that their investment journey continues markets will be volatile as ambrish and sunil mentioned there are wall of worries which market has to climb but at the same time there is tremendous improvement in corporate profitability as sunil mentioned hmm. for the december 20 quarterly the nifty 500 companies have reported highest ever profit of 2 lakh 10000 crore hmm. now when you value the market on a trailing basis it appears as a 43 price to earning ratio hmm. when you annualize december quarterly profit it becomes 8 lakh 40000 crore for the next year Hmm. that just makes market at 23 times forward e hmm. i have rarely seen such kind of wide divergence between trailing p e and a forward p e. hmm. so markets will swing between hope and fear one day it will be down because us interest rates are rising because hmm. oil prices are going up hmm. because active cases are rising hmm. on other day it will also rise because corporate profitability is sustaining and companies are giving good results right but what do you Markets think is the like reason behind this fourth day consecutive fall then what's making people sell uh one people have made lot of profits so there is bound to be some profit booking hmm. second the short term driver of the market is oil price inflation and interest rates hmm. and all three are negative hmm. but if you see in this correction hmm. the fpi have still been a buyer month to date they have been buyer so it will be very difficult to predict what is driving market in the hmm. short term i can at best say that markets will fluctuate that will be a fair statement from my side all right the swing is going to continue that's what i'm hearing from the panel so far let me bring in uh, mr narayan over here what are your views sonal uh, thanks for having me and uh, it's an excellent panel i wish i could disagree with them violently i can't so amrish sunil as well as nilesh uh, yeah this is going to be yeah. a pretty boring uh, agreeable panel mm-hmm. now uh, let me try and break this into three parts sonal uh, the global perspective the india's perspective and therefore what should we do as investors hmm. look globally um, this is a massive economic experiment that's underway so hmm. ever since the start of the covid crisis governments have pumped in tremendous amount of money right so hmm. the us hmm. has spent something like 6 trillion dollars which is 28% of their 21 trillion dollar hmm. economy hmm. as fiscal hmm. outflow 
putting money into people's hands hmm. all that has created money globally governments are indebted and people have money in their hands okay right. now what has what does that money do at a time when interest rates are so low and you can't spend the money because you're sitting inside your house you have to put it somewhere so therefore debasement of money Not will happen no any longer actually nobody sitting inside their house any longer it's starting to recover which is yeah. the interesting part so which hmm. is the interesting part but during the crisis you actually had people sitting with money not knowing what hmm. to do with it at hmm. a time when interest rates were low so hmm. therefore you bought assets look at the us stock markets are up tech stocks are extremely up real hmm. estate is up property prices are up hmm. so essentially money value went down everything went went, went up hmm. now here is the interesting part as the economy normalizes as vaccinations they under underway we get underway and herd immunity kicks in hmm. does the global economy have to start unwinding what they did do they have to take back some of the 6 trillion dollars which they pumped in hmm. in which case that will have ramifications for asset prices that will have ramifications for, for emerging markets like us hmm. which means you could see volatility which is why i agree with nilesh as this experiment unfolds and we figure hmm. out what the hell happens to inflation what happens therefore to monetary policy and fiscal hmm. policy you could see volatility in stock markets but coming to india yeah. look india has also uh, uh, seen creation quick, of money quick 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 last 10 seconds and i have to take a break yeah so uh, india has also seen the creation of money and hmm. therefore we could see volatility as uh, we have seen a rise 22% rise in stock markets etc but here is the other story india also has a long term story hmm. you know here is the chance for us to take advantage of this china plus one strategy get hmm. some supply chain from global and uh, how much can we actually bank and how much is the world banking on this india story that's something i'm going to touch upon right on the other side of this quick break stay tuned Welcome back we are discussing the fascinating rise and fall of the market or can't really call it a fall or a minor correction that we are seeing at the moment and i believe dhirendra hasn't spoken so far dhirendra your comments on how you seeing this volatility going on dhirendra if i could request you to unmute yourself please uh yeah we got you now go ahead okay uh no i don't think we need to find the reason why the market you know where we can attribute this uh, volatility hmm. uh, i think you know markets are volatile and the range of volatility that we see on a day to day basis is nothing meaningful just that in terms of point it looks large thousand points gain or decline hmm. but it just turns out to be you know uh, half a percent so it's it's not meaningful the, the other thing to look at, to look at is that you know there are many drivers to our market india is an island of growth for the first time we are witnessing uh, for few months we have witnessed that domestic investors you know mutual fund hmm. mutual fund investors they have been pulling out money to an extent and uh, that is the only thing which will be causing some difference but broadly i would say that this decline is not of a meaningful kind investors i i actually see the broad basing of the market we have seen that you know, in the, the the surge of the market from hmm. slow, from last year's march uh we have seen a, a complete recovery okay. and now we are more than that actually you know, more than that, not just recovery the... but you know more and doing better i'm told mr binod the modi the head strategy at reliance security some issue with this video but i think i got him on audio there mr modi if you can hear me last quick comment to you on what is expected out of the market especially at a time when the sort of bank interest rates are at a historic low is this a time to still enter the market Yes, yeah, certainly. If I look at, there are you know certain issues which has propped up, and that has definitely you know made uh, you know a, a lot of investors been jittery as of now. That's been mm. reflected in the market. But if I look at you know you know the broad parameter of the market, like you know certain parameters. If I look at especially on the valuations parameter, I think uh, uh, the kind of you know the EPS for the for Nifty 50 that we are stepping estimating around 828, 25 or 523 market is still at you know 17 to 17 and a half times. Mm. so still that looks to be quite comfortable to me at the same time if you look the other parameter like like i can say the way we are seeing you know the uh, earnings of you know uh, nsc 500 companies that the way they pining out so it definitely increase the overall you know earnings yield of the market and difference between this uh, and also IPOs, yield, as well as so well many as of them coming in and so many of them actually doing so very well so a lot of interesting things over there sadly that's all the time we have on the program but thank you all so much for joining us with your expert comments it was lovely chatting up and like i said tomorrow we're going to talk about the other thing 
uh, that is on everybody's mind, which is on which vaccine to get, whether Covishield is leading to clots or not. That's going to be on FII tomorrow. See you then.